Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the day two of our 2.3 liter uh, turbocharged uh, Thunderbird engine project. So uh, I went a little further since the last video and uh, I'm gonna kind of be all over the map talking about stuff. I blew the whole engine apart. There's a the box and on the floor, box of stuff that needs to get cleaned and degreased. Probably send it through the ultrasonic cleaner. Bits and pieces all over the bench. And this is the, like the, the dirty stage where everything is filthy and uh, you just gotta start somewhere. And where I started, where I like starting is always on the heads. That's just my thing. This is where the power is made. If this head isn't done right, then you know, you're just never, this car's never gonna run very well. So, uh, this head was supposedly, had, well, it did have larger valves installed. These are bigger uh, intake and exhaust valves. And they did the machine work and the throat work to install them. But then my buddy said he was supposed to have blended them and poured them, but that categorically was never done. So I got some pictures of here. I'll post up of what these heads look like inside the, the pocket chambers. You can see they they cut it. They have big uh, points with an arrow here, like huge ridges, you know, that are left in the uh, in the ports. Just totally crap. Uh, lazy machine work is all I can call that of getting things done. And uh, what I did was I you know I, I took the head all apart and uh, I went at at it with my grinders and my burrs and you know I got quite an assortment of different things here. So I use this my one for um, like heavy removal. I didn't really, you know, we're not setting the world on fire here. I just wanted to blend everything in is all I really wanted to do. You can see I didn't go crazy. I don't know if you can see, there's still a little bit of the, the rust there in the port from, you know, the original casting. I, I wasn't going to go crazy because I don't know where the thin spots are. So, so I just blended down the valve guide bosses, tapering. You know the ports making sure there's a nice smooth radius on the short side and because like you gotta imagine like all the air comes in the intake port and through the head this way so i tried to lay down this section of the wall the chamber wall for the intake port and the exhaust port all the air comes and goes in this direction to go out the port so i tried to lay back this a little bit you know make everything smooth and just Went at it all throughout the head, so, I mean, this is just the upside down exhaust ports, so they've all been just, basically just cleaned up, took all the rust off, you know, blended a little bit in the, uh, the radius down there, but nothing cosmic. It just cleaned it up and made it to how it should have been done by the guy that did the machine work. So, I took the cam bearings out, took every little last you know, all the, the tappets and things and the, the roller rockers out of the heads. Even took the cam bearings out because that's the only way that you're ever going to truly clean you know, all the old passages out. You know, took the, the plugs out, took the brushes and went in and around. So this head has been totally cleaned, ported. And then I just went to check the valve job. Well, the valve job on the intake valves is nice you know i uh, lapped all the valves in this is what you want to see when you you do a good valve job even before you check it with like some uh some valve grinding compound so again you want to hear the valves kind of hit and bounce so that is the sign of a very concentric seat but then you get to the exhaust valves this thud 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 so it is extremely hard to show you in the video but the only place that the valves were touching the seats were from here around to here and then the seat spots where i drew the arrows at and the lighting is terrible there was no uh valve seat contact from there to there and i'll show you here in a video where you can see the light shine through the port. All right, here's where I'm gonna show you how bad this valve job is. So if I stick a, a light and flash up here in the port, you can see, hopefully, 
light shining through. So from arrow to arrow, yeah, you can almost see it flashing on the side walls barely. Uh, this is why you always check everything. So I'm gonna check this one. So I don't know if you'll be able to see the light shining through there, how bad that one is. You can slap it down. That's even worse than the arrows that I put on there. This one was the only one that I thought was okay. That one's all right, but this one, that's yeah, still, this is bad. So I gotta bust out the valve grinding gear and uh, fix up this head. So just because you get something done by a professional shop doesn't mean it's any good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I got to bust out my valve grinding uh, equipment again. And this is the only exhaust seat that was concentric all the way around. I didn't need to do anything. It's still not perfect. It, the valve doesn't bounce. But I mean, this intake valve bounces. Heard it there. Not as nice as this one. And this one bounces. And this one doesn't bounce, but it still cleans up nice. So it's still, it's on the edge, but it's, it's acceptable. But yeah, this one was terrible, this one's terrible, and this one was terrible. So I gotta grind it, and I'm probably gonna just kiss this one up a little bit more, just to make them all the same. But, yeah. <laughs> shoddy, shoddy machine work. And uh, boy, I wish it wasn't the case, but that's the, like the trend. That's why I don't trust anything. I mean, this would have definitely caused very lousy running engine, especially turbocharged where there's a lot of exhaust back pressure. I mean, the the pressure would be going back into the port, you know, fouling the, the mixture for the next uh, combustion cycle. So on all three of these, and it's like, you can see how from that, the video where the light was flashing and how bad it was, I mean, you couldn't even, some of the exhaust seats are kind of bad, or valve seats, you can press on them pretty hard, or even with the valve spring installed, you can, it'll close up, because the guide is weak, and the valve will kind of find a new center, but, uh, yeah, the guides are really good in this head, I don't think they've ever been replaced, but, you know, you would think they'd be able to do a good valve seat uh, job with that, but they didn't, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, other things, you know, this is the stuff we have to like correct. I mean, look at this heavy corrosion on this connecting rod and all that the rust dust up in there. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to take this, if it's worth the risk to press this pin back off the rod to try to clean this up. I mean, they had ARP rod bolts installed. Hopefully they uh, did the proper job of reconditioning these rods, but I'll take it apart later and look. I'll have to double check the ring gap because uh don't know if they gapped them according to turbo specs or not, but I will check later. Uh, there's no evidence at all of any balancing on this engine. I mean, they've, they've replaced the pistons. Looks like they're decent aftermarket forged pistons. Machine work's been done. Uh, the main bearings are standard. I haven't checked the rod bearings yet. So the crank looks like a little bit of, all cranks look a little bad once you get oil off of them. But yeah, there's not a single grind mark or redrill mark anywhere on this crank to say that it was balanced. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to see if he wants to get the bottom end stuff balanced before we put this back together. Uh, we got the pilot bushing out. You know, look at all the heavy rust on this from just sitting. I'm trying to get the, to polish this back up for the, uh, the rear main seal surface. Make sure we don't have any leaks, but the... Uh, Here's the the pilot bushing that was in there. So we're going to have to either get a replacement. I don't know where he got this one from because I can't find any just general searches on the web. This is a bronze white bushing for a standard four-cylinder turbo. So the inner diameter is smaller because the four-cylinder T5 has a smaller diameter pilot bearing area. So if you... The external diameters are proper because this bushing is meant to press into this crank but the inside diameter is smaller so unless I get this machined out 
to this size and press it in or the most optimal situation is if we take this is a pilot bushing from a regular v8 small block ford if we take the inner bearing part out press it out they just they'll come out easily if you put it in a press and we machine when we take this in for balancing we get them to machine the end of the crankshaft out just to press this bearing in that would be the best because it's a replaceable bearing and bearings you know i would have a lot longer service life in this uh, situation than a bushing would and uh, if we get this stuff balanced that's what i would like the shop to do is get a machine the end of the crank to fit this bearing to fit the v8 t5 stuff and then if it goes bad you just replace the bearing because these bushings you hear people say they only have a very short lifespan they never tell you exactly how short it is depending on conditions and racing or something but uh yeah i think that's the longest term solution is to get the crank machine for that but yeah i gotta take the rest of the block to bits take all the uh oil galley plugs out does not look like they've been out in the past take those bearings out for the uh dialer shaft and i'll give the block a good clean clean and clean and clean it as the gonna be the theme for the next few weeks as i get time to get into this but yeah so the head is the big thing and yeah, we're cracking on so i'll get this uh bust out the valve grinding gear knock these uh, exhaust valves out and continue on building it up because once this is built up a lot of parts will be uh out of the way and it will just continue on so i'm taking the little bites of the elephant to get it done so i'll show you a little bit of the valve grinding stuff here it's not too cosmic you've seen it before in the uh the 390 videos that i put out but uh yeah we'll get on with it i'll catch you back in a few grinding session so all I did was touch the exhausts and uh, lapped them all back in they all came up really nice and here's the result so you saw how the uh, the intake valves uh, good balance so you hear that was still a double tap double bounce and here's the exhaust now pop double So the valve seats are all really nice. I gotta do two hands here to get them out. They won't stick. So we can see the the dark gray of the lapping. So I actually did hit the tops with a 30, you know, just to blend them in a little bit better. So you know, promoting with that three-angle valve job mentality. But yeah, these are ready now to go back together, and I feel confident that it's gonna be done right so uh yeah so just trying to get people to pay attention to what they're doing all the way to the end with a machine shop anymore is gonna be difficult and i don't, I don't know if it's systemic but uh i've yet to find a place that is that doesn't have those the sturdy style of valve machines with operators that really take their time and do the job correctly to the end, other than like a race shop. Because race shops, you know, they take the time to get things done, but you're gonna pay the premium for what service they offer because that's how guys with gigantic camshafts, you know, can sit there and the engine will idle perfectly, you know, in a streetable manner, you know, and in a drag ship, they, it's like they flip a switch and it comes alive and it's just an amazing performance. But you try to do that yourself on the street and you put a even a slightly too big a cam in and it doesn't want to run right. And it's usually because 
tolerances like the, the heads aren't really done right or you didn't bore the engine with torque plates and you have blow by and all kinds of stuff so the quality of the machine work can really make or break a project so uh yeah well next thing is uh put the cam bearings back in i gotta clean up the valve springs and the lifters and everything else so yeah, it'll be a while but i'll just keep soldiering on and i'll bring you back when i got more to show you